Hello everybody and hello to all the dronies out there. This is Jose Rodriguez. I'm going to show you something really, really fun. This is the unique Typhoon Q500 simulator. Now you've seen that drone before. It's quite large and on days such as this, which was rainy and dark and gloomy and you could probably not get many GPS satellites to lock onto, the best thing to do is to just use a simulator. Now, DJI also produces a simulator for some of their drones. Basically, what you do is you're going to use your transmitter and your program simulator dongle-like devices, USB. We're going to go ahead and pop this into the computer's USB. It's going to automatically load the simulator program. The first thing we have to do is to turn on the controller. By flipping the switch right here, you can see it start to boot up. This has a built-in Android tablet. It'll give you that beautiful welcome sound. And we'll wait for it to fully boot up. And then we'll go ahead and open up the simulator program. And then we'll be able to fly. And I'll give you a bit of the uh, actual screen capture of what the simulator simulator looks like during its use so right now it's trying to bind and of course it's not going to bind to anything unless we turn on the simulator and here we are as you can see this is a typhoon q500 plus which is what i have the controller for i do have the q500 4k which is the gray version of this now there's a binding procedure that you have to abide by so we're going to go ahead and Bind unique USB receiver. We're going to click on that. I'm going to have to go into the binding uh, mode on my receiver. You basically hit the flight settings and then OK and then bind. And then what will happen is that you'll get this little code right here. Please set the transmitter into bind mode and hit OK. Once I hit OK, you will see the simulator listed right here we just go ahead and touch it we're gonna hit ok and hit ok again and it should say that the bind procedure has been completed successfully all right so now we are in the actual simulation mode i will be able to control this simulated drone with all of the controls on my original actual controller now let me go back to me so that I can show you what this means exactly okay so we have the normal mode 2 control situation this will be altitude this will be down this will be yaw to the left yaw to the right pitch forward pitch backwards roll to the left roll to the right this is regular pilot mode or what they call angle mode this will be smart mode which basically you can just turn the drone whatever orientation it happens to be in this will always be forward this will always be back this will always be left this will always be right regardless of how the drone is oriented well that's the beginner mode we don't want to use the beginner mode we just want to use the standard flight mode which is angle mode now return to home say we get out really far we totally lose the orientation of the copter and we want to return to home you just flip it down to the bottom it will return to home automatically this is the gimbal adjustment right here a little lever and this is the speed adjustment basically is turtle mode which is the slowest and more um controllable um speed to your input from your stick if I turn it up gradually, I increase the speed of which the copter will react to my control commands. So this is rabbit mode. That's the fastest and the slowest. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate all of that during flight. All right, so we'll begin the simulation. Start, and here we go. See those lights that are blinking? That's because I have it returned to home. I'm going to put it on angle mode, and you see that it becomes... Hard for you to see possibly, but it is a purple steady light. That means that it has been properly bound 
properly locked to GPS satellites and the compass calibration has been done and it is perfect. Smart mode, it turns into a slow blinking green light. And like I said, this, regardless of the orientation of the nose of the copter, you will be able to maneuver the ship quite easily. It doesn't matter which way it is pointing. When you push forward, it will go forward, whether it is laterally oriented or not. All right, so let's set it on angle mode. We're gonna go ahead and press my startup button. We're gonna hold it down for three seconds. One, two, and three. Here we go, we are idling. So now I'm gonna push up with a stick. And here we go. I'm gonna let go and it'll just sit there and hover. Now this bird is about a four and a half pound bird, okay? So there's a lot of forces there involved. This is not a really lightweight bird. So when you stop, it's going to move. It's going to continue moving a bit. You know, an object moving, you know, the, you know, the deal, the physics behind that. So let's go ahead and you all to the left a little bit. And I'm doing this in so-called turtle mode. Okay, now let's rise up a little bit and pitch forward. Let's go. will rise. You see how gradual that is that this actually reacts pretty much the same as the real drone, regardless of whether it is a simulation or not. It's really amazing. This is what I get when I actually fly this bird. We'll do a little figure eight here. Again, I'm just full forward pitch. We'll turn left again, come back. I'm going to stop my forward momentum and just do a yaw and rise up a little bit. Now I'm going to come toward me and I'm going to drop. And up. Once you get above you, the simulator will turn around, basically continue giving you a view of what the copter is doing. Now I'm leaving the area, so I better come back. I'm actually going too far. As you can see, it gives you a warning that you have left the limitation of this copter. So I'm actually flying backwards. Great for droney type shots. I'm you know, letting go of the sticks. As you can see, it's just it just sits there. You all to the left. Back. Forward pitch, side. You can see that you can almost feel the pendulous uh, action when you do a, a side move like this, where you're just swinging side to side. Now I had a little bit of forward there, so I need to bring it back. Let's go ahead and drop it. And I want to go ahead and put it about eye level. For you guys to see and again it's amazing how accurately this feels it's really amazing i'm going at the slowest mode possible by the way so let me go closer to the camera this will be me the camera would be me so that's my position i'm right behind the drone let me bring it down so right now i'm possibly about maybe five feet away from it you can see the shadow on the grass i'm going to go sideways you see how there's some it doesn't, it doesn't immediately stop. It just keeps going a little bit. When I shift, that's the weight of that drone reacting. So it's something you have to take into account when you fly this. That it's not going to be some little lightweight model that can immediately turn on a dime. This is going to require some planning when you're making aggressive turns. Let's go ahead and keep it at a low altitude. Look at that. This is actually the way it feels. It actually does not stay locked like a DJI product would. This will move around a little bit. It gets affected by the wind somewhat, but the gimbal is just fantastic. Let's go ahead and rotate to the to the right so that we can look at the camera. Now I'm going to go ahead and we'll get us a little bit closer. Whoops, wrong direction. See, even I lost my orientation there for a minute. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get close, close and personal. 
All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll to the right and left, and I want you to look at the gimbal. I wish this simulator gave you a camera's view of what it is seen. Again, that would cause incredible amount of shake on a non-gimbal type drone, but not on this one. This is really a, a great gimbal. Now, it comes with an adapter that you can take that camera off and basically mount it on a handheld uh, Steadicam type adapter and you can walk around with it and you have all, all the controls that you normally would have. Notice I'm dropping the gimbal down. Look at that. And I'm raising the gimbal up. Again, I wish this had the view of what the camera is actually seeing. Okay, we'll rotate to the left and we'll go forward again. Here we go. Now I want to give you a demonstration of rabbit mode versus turtle mode. We'll bring it down. to a low hover. I'm going to switch over to rabbit mode right here. I'm going to turn that lever up and now we're going to shoot on up a lot faster. Remember this is almost four pounds of bird and forward pitch. Much faster, much more responsive and again much more dangerous because if you crash this four and a half pound bird onto something it's going to cause damage. There's no doubt about that. Here we are. We are getting too far away. We're getting too far away. Let's come back to a safer area right about here. And we'll come back, come back down. And right there it crashed. You saw that? The momentum was too much that would have caused a crash. Now let me demonstrate return to home. So we're going to go out to the end of the field down there. We'll go up pretty high, but it'll be way down there. Okay, now I'm going to stop. It's going to stay there for a bit. I'm going to flip the lever right here, folks. This lever right here, the down position. And take a look at the behavior of the bird. It immediately starts to come back. It goes up to a certain set altitude. And once it reaches the point where it took off your home point, it's going to come on down. It's going to hover. And it's going to position itself right there. All right. So now it's going to stop until we give it the command to go again. Press the power button. You have to be on angle mode to be able to take off. Now, let's go ahead and fly using smart mode. So let me go up, rotate to the left, and we're gonna go forward. So this is forward. It'll go in the direction of the nose. Pitch forward. Pitch back. It'll go in the direction of the tail. Let me turn to the left a bit. Bring it down so we can see what we're doing here. All right, so let's just hover right here. So if I want to roll to the right, it rolls to the right. Notice it's actually changing orientation, the viewpoint. So let's get it so that it's aligned with us. Roll left and roll right. But what if I am turned around? Let's say I'm turned around this way. When I go forward, it comes toward me. When I go back, it goes away from me because our orientation is flipped 180 degrees. But in smart mode, let's put it back over the center of the field here momentarily. In smart mode, it doesn't really matter. So we'll set that on smart mode right now. Now, even though it is actually turned sort of aiming in our direction, when I hit the stick forward, it's going to go forward. In reality, it's going backwards and sideways. When I hit the stick to come to me, 
regardless of the orientation, it's going to come to me. Now, one thing that you could do is that you could take some really neat shots where you're actually, say, orienting the bird against something horizontal. We'll bring it down and I'll show you what I mean. To well orient the bird over us. This is in smart mode. Now, there's a, a limitation as to how close smart mode would allow you to get the bird to you. It's 26 foot radius. So, if I go forward, it's going to go forward. It's going to go sideways, actually. So, say I want to do a horizontal pan, but then I want to also yaw as I'm going in the same direction. You could do that. That's very hard to do. Otherwise, we'll come back. We'll come back and I will do a yaw to the right. As I am coming toward me. To be able to coordinate that kind of move is, is kind of difficult to do. Unless you're an expert plier. So that's something that you can do in smart mode because it has, it doesn't really matter which way you're oriented. Your command controls will always go in the direction of your stick. So if you go forward on your stick, regardless of whether the drone is facing you, if I hit forward, it's going to go away from you. If I hit roll toward me, it's going to go toward me, regardless of the orientation. I can rotate all day long and it's going to continue to move. I'm going forward and rotating at the same time. You could not do that using pilot mode unless you're a really good flyer. Okay, so let's go back to pilot mode and go ahead and rotate toward me. We're going to say hello to the camera. Hello, camera. Come on down. Now, one of the things that you need to do, and this actually does sort of demonstrate that a little bit, and that is a prop wash. So if you're coming down from a high altitude, Remember, the props are creating downdraft. That's how it creates lift. If you come down through that downdraft, you may lose control because the pressure is so much lower underneath. So what is recommended that you do in real life when you're actually flying and you want to come, say, let me go back, and you want to come and land from a relatively high altitude is to sort of zigzag your way back down to a landing. So I'm going to zigzag to the left, to the right, as I am dropping in altitude. I'm going to zigzag a little bit. That way I'm never going to get caught in that so-called prop wash. I'm going to come to me. And turn around completely. And we're going to land. When it lands, it's going to hover. A bit and then it's going to come down for a landing and boom and then the next thing you do is simply press the button to power off the rotors there you go that's how you do it pretty neat right let me go back to me and maybe we'll discuss a little bit more about this controller now i bought a little third party product and you crazy glue this puppy on here. This keeps you from accidentally hitting that red button while you're up in the air. If you do that, you're gonna have a five pound brick come down. It's gonna be heavy, heavy damage. Heavy damage, okay? This is not something to take it, you know, to take lightly. This is only for takeoff and for turning off the propellers once you land. At this point, if I was to click this real drone, hold it for three seconds it will start up spinning it will not take off then i close that because i don't want to accidentally you know press that button while i'm flying that is the emergency shut off okay and it's going to come down like a like a ton of bricks so this is something that you buy extra um they're available on ebay really neat little product i bought a couple of them for both of my controllers and so i just love them now there's also a shade that you can attach here for when it's too bright outside because this has no brightness control it just doesn't 
so there's no way to increase the brightness of the actual display it would be nice if we could do that but unfortunately that's not the case so anyway that is it these buttons do nothing they are not trim buttons i think uh in the future they thought they might incorporate some sort of trim mechanism but that's not the case so basically we have the gimbal control the speed control here rabbit or turtle this is for taking video this is for taking photos right here and you have full blown um 4k uh cinematic type wide widescreen video not the 16 by 9 but the wider uh ratio and uh it does a ridiculously good job okay it's not going to be hollywood quality as far as resolution and distortion free because this is a you know this camera is a wide angle camera and it does have a slightly curved horizon depending on the angle of the camera on how your ship is oriented it's not perfectly uh distortion free but the results are fantastic and so if you want to see some of my videos i have them on my channel so take a look at that all right that is it for now thank you this is a lot of fun a lot of fun to use and again even if you have a dji product which i do not i cannot afford them yet um they also have a controller um, and simulator type combo that you can use. Their app can actually simulate and you can just play around all day. Not have to worry about the weather. Learn how to fly this way. Learn how to handle your controller. That's the most important thing. And if you crash, it's meaningless. At least you learn something. So I practice a lot with these. As you can see, I only have one little mishap where I came down very, very fast. Again, it's hard to stop a four and a half pound bird, okay, nearly five pound bird. It depends um, if I load the prop guards, which are humongous and they actually do protect because this bird has a tendency to maybe sometimes pitch forward. If the grass you are landing on is too high, the propellers are gonna hit it, it's gonna maybe tip it sideways. I've had to replace a couple of propellers already. It's best to land and take off on a landing pad or a piece of plywood or something that is flat and you will not have any have any problem hitting something when and it will tip over once in a while during the landing uh, it's a little bit of a um, problem with these types of copters but anyway once you get them up in the air and once you are gps locked and once you are properly calibrated they fly so smooth it's just crazy it's just crazy just about anybody can fly them but it still takes practice and I don't like to use the cheat modes like smart mode. I like to fly angle mode, which requires full control and concentration from me, the pilot. So to get those skills and to hone them, you need a simulator such as this. This sells for about 39, almost 40. Sometimes you see them for $49, but again, get them on eBay. And um, I think I paid $39 for it. So worth every penny and it's a lot of fun you're able to then if you're locked into the house due to bad weather if there's three feet of snow outside you can just fly to your heart's content on your computer you will not have any accidents that will matter anyway you will have some crashes but it will not matter because you're not going to be damaging anything including your drone all right thank you so much don't forget to subscribe share and like continue watching my videos they're a lot of fun all right bye bye everyone